So have you been demanding the impossible of yourself? Have you been telling yourself what horrible things are going to happen when you can't do the impossible? Hi, my name's Mark Lutz. I'm the growth and healing pastor and the director of Life Reset Ministries at the Vineyard. And uh, last session, we started our battle plan discussion on fighting against anxiety, and specifically that part of anxiety that comes from us demanding the impossible of ourselves. And so our battle plan has been, and hopefully what you've been practicing, is to let God be in charge of the impossible, to tell yourself the truth, and start meditating on that truth so it goes from your mind into your heart. Uh, in this segment, I want to talk about this problem of uh, anxiety, and it's this. This is, uh, is the battle between worry and faith. And I want us to have a battle plan that's going to help us in this, the struggle between worry and faith. Uh, worry is the decision to buy into Satan's narrative, and it's the act of mentally rehearsing Satan's victories. Uh, Satan's often uh, offering his uh, services as a consultant. He's generous with his giving on the take on any given situation. Uh, he'll give you predictions about what's going to happen. Uh, he'll always tell you a story, but I'll tell you this, it's never a happy story. It's never, never a good story. Uh, but whenever we buy into Satan's interpretations and uh, predictions, we start to, to feel worry and we start to feed anxiety. And sometimes it's even like, uh, it's like he's lulling us into a trance. He'll be saying to us uh, things like this. He'll say, you're small and weak. I'm big and dangerous. I'm going to bring pain to your life and you can't do a thing about it. And then we say, yes, I'm, I'm small and weak. Uh, I can't do anything about it. Satan will say, uh, when people discover the real you, you're going to be rejected. You're going to be abandoned. You are alone. And I'll say, yes, I'm alone. Satan will say, destruction is just around the corner and you're never going to see it coming. And I go, yes, I will be caught off guard by the destruction that is surely coming. Satan says, the catastrophe that you fear most, that's the one that's going to happen to you. And I say, yes, it's just a matter of time until X, Y, Z happens. And then we fill in the blank which, with whatever thing that we fear the most. We're going to lose our job, lose a house, lose a relationship that's important to us, uh, be humiliated, be rejected, uh, experiencing never-ending sorrow and pain. And then again, we do awfulizing. Remember, we talked about that in the first segment. And we say, uh, after all this happens, after Satan has his victory, and then it will be awful, it will be horrible, it will be miserable. And so that's, that's the aspect of worry. Now, this is the battle plan. We need to participate in faith. And faith is a decision to embrace God's truth. And it's the act of mentally rehearsing God's victory. Now, Satan's trick in this is to uh, try to get us to do this. In a, in a situation that's troubling to us, concerning to us, Satan will try to get us to predict exactly what God's going to do. And Satan does that knowing full well what Scripture says. Uh, God has said, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Uh, my ways are not your ways, my thoughts are not your thoughts. So what happens is, I guess what God's going to do, I guess wrong, and then I conclude, oh, God's not for me. He's not looking out for me. He doesn't have my back. Now, instead... If we would remember the scripture, uh, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his great power at work in us, to him be glory. If we were mindful of that scripture, our self-talk would be something like this. I expect God to do something as good as I can imagine or even better. But in any case, it's very likely God wants to do something here. That's a thing that my wife and I had to practice for a couple of years. She was diagnosed with cancer, and there were a lot of uncertainties along the way, and there were different things that, that happened that were uh, threatened great harm. But we had also seen many things where God was clearly at work opening up doors. And so we didn't tell ourselves, it'll all be fine, it'll be perfect, it'll be great, because honestly, we've prayed for friends who had cancer, and they passed away. 
So we didn't tell ourselves it'll all be fine. But we told ourselves it's very likely God wants to do something here. And even the most skeptical, jaded part of our fleshly nature couldn't argue with that because God had been so obviously involved. Now, he didn't do everything the way I wanted it to, but clearly he was participating in things. So we had to begin to tell ourselves that. It's very likely God wants to do something here, either as good as I can imagine or better. Now, we talked previously about uh, insight alone doesn't produce change. We can get a new truth up here. But what we got to do is get that truth into our heart, into our deep knower. And so the way we do that is with meditation. Uh, Here's a couple of meditations that uh, I have used to train my brain to uh, visualize God's victory. God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you, Hebrews 13. Jesus said this, my father is always at his work to this very day, and I too am working, John chapter 5. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil, 1 John chapter 3. See what a great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is it did not know him. Now, dear friends, now we are children of God, but what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him. Jesus said this, he says, I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. I like that one because there is the promise of peace even while there is trouble all around. And there's no denying that there's trouble all the way around. And Paul wrote this from 2 Corinthians. We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our bodies the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our bodies. Now, therefore, while we are outwardly wasting away, we're being renewed inwardly day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary. What is unseen is eternal. So again, these are things that you have to run through your mind over and over and over again until your mind is saturated in the truth of these scriptures. So be mindful of whose victory you're rehearsing in your mind, whose victory you're playing over and over in your mind. Be aware of those moments when you've been uh, enticed into imagining Satan's victory and call your mind back. And commit to that this reality that God is going to be victorious. So stick to your battle plan and, and fight, fight for your peace. 